today we are using the Portrait 4 Silhouette Studio in these acrylic blanks to make some amazing sparkly Christmas ornaments. I am giving you all of the print in cut secrets here in this tutorial, so if you've ever had any issues with print and cut at all, you're going to want to stick around and you'll see how easy it is to make these amazing Christmas ornaments. Super simple. Hi, I'm Brenda Lambert. I'm a TJC licensed instructor for Silhouette. You found your way to Silhouette Success. There is a ton of information in this video today, so let's get started. Let's start at the beginning with our page setup. I have my page setup panel open and I have the portrait for selected. I think I'm going to switch over to the portrait for for a while and do some tutorials on that. I do have my cutting mat set to the portrait for mat and my media size is set to letter. I'm going to hop over to the third tab now and turn the registration marks on and this should be ready to go. Now it's time to bring in our files and typically I would tell you to head up to file and go down to merge and open up the folder where your images are at. You can click on this little down arrow and choose icons instead of a list and then you can see what you're pulling on your mat. Then you can double click on an image and it will bring it onto your design mat. We're going to look at a quicker way to do this today. Go down to your taskbar at the bottom and find your file explorer. Click on that. Open up your downloads and find the folder with your images. I do have the view set to large icons again and we can see everything that we have to work with here. Now we can just simply click and drag these onto the mat and we don't have to do file and merge each and every time. And this is much, much quicker. When we're done, we can just close that out. Now the quickest way to scale all of these down to the proper size at one time is to head up to this button here. This will select all of the images. Let's go ahead and center them. And we're going to actually group these together so that we can come up to the top, double click and enter our width. Now I know that I need these set at 7.85 centimeters. Typically I do work in inches for all of my measurements. It's just what I'm used to, but the Christmas ornaments that I have to work with are eight centimeters wide. So it's easier for me to scale these down using centimeters. If you're ever in a spot where you need to switch from centimeters to inches or vice versa, you're going to go down to your little blue gear here, click on that. This box will pop up and you have all kinds of options to flip through, but the one we're looking for is right on the first page. We need unit of measurement. If you click on this arrow, it pulls up a drop down menu and you can choose inches, millimeters, centimeters, meters, inches, or feet. So you click on whichever one you want to use and then click on OK and it will switch your measurements over for you. It's really easy to go back and forth through the different units of measurement as long as you remember that you get to that option through the little gear at the bottom. Now that they are all the same size, we can right click and ungroup them and set them in place. And we just want to make sure that we are not covering any of the hatched areas. We want to keep those nice and clear so that the machine can read the registration marks when it's time. Now, not all of these are going to fit on my page, so I need to decide which ones I want to use. And I think that I'm just going to go with one snowman instead of two and put the gingerbread on. Now, I did go through and make quite a few of these before I made the video. And one of the Christmas ornaments that I made had a personal photo in there. If you want to use a personal photo, you're going to bring it onto your mat. Let's head to downloads, snag the picture. And this comes in at a square. We definitely want it in a circle. We'll get to that in just a second. But first, I want to adjust the colors on this just a little bit. Let's go over to our image effects panel. With the image selected, we can 
do quite a few different things with it, but I'm going to concentrate on the brightness, the saturation, and the contrast today. And you can play around with any of these options up in here to get the picture just the way you want it, and then go ahead and click on Apply. Now, in order to crop this, we can use this circle. We know it's the right size. We just need to select that, come up to the top, and select No Fill Color. Our outline is still there. Let's bring this to the front, get it placed over top of the picture where we want it, select both, open up the Modify panel, and crop. It's really as easy as that. Now this image is exactly the size we need it, and we can go ahead and print that and put that in a Christmas ornament as well. Now these Christmas ornaments are clear on both sides, of course, and if you want to do a double-sided ornament, you can duplicate these pictures and you'll want to print out two of each. For the ornaments that I'm working on right now, I'm only going to print one of each image because I'm going to put glitter on the back side of the ornament. You won't be able to see the back of these photos. Now everything seems to be set up just the way we want it. Let's go up to our send page and take a look. Everything is within the hatched areas and everything is within the red cut border. That looks good. The lines are lit up in red, which means all of these circles will cut. I'm going to come up to my materials list and choose photo paper. That's going to bring in a blade depth of 3, a force of 15, one pass, and a speed of 10. Now we need to go up to file and down to print. You'll want to check your print preview, make sure that everything looks just right, and then click on print. Choose your printer, and I always open up my preferences to make sure that the document size is correct. You want your document size to match the settings that you put in for your page setup panel. I am going to be using premium photo paper glossy for this, and I have my print quality set to high. If you're having problems with your print and cut not printing right, you want to look for this setting here, Reduce or Enlarge Document. If this is checked, it's not going to print properly. You want this to print out exactly as it looks in Silhouette Studio because it's using that information to determine where to place the cut marks. Since everything looks okay in the printer settings, we can click on OK and then Print. I'm using the Koala Inkjet Glossy Photo Paper for this. It is 36 pound paper, so it is pretty thin, but I like this for these ornaments because you have to be able to close them up, and if the paper's too thick, it's going to prevent the bulbs from closing properly. Now this is the printed sheet, all ready to go, and believe it or not, the way you place the paper on your cutting mat will make a difference in how well it reads the registration marks. You want to set the paper at the top left hand corner of the cutting mat, but you want to make sure that the top left corner of the grid is covered by the paper. The sensor can actually pick that grid line up and throw your reading off. It's also important to place your cutting mat into your machine properly. There is a line with an arrow on your cutting machine. You want to place the edge of the cutting mat just to the right of that line. Once the mat's loaded into the machine, you're going to want to close the lid while it reads the registration marks, especially if you're using glossy paper or if you're using holographic laminate. Outside light can create glare and shadows that's going to throw the reading off. These machines can read these marks in total darkness, and honestly, that's probably the way to get the most accurate readings of these marks. As I mentioned earlier in the video, I am highlighting the Portrait 4 for the next few videos. I typically use my Cameo 5, and that's just for convenience, really. It sets on my work area, and I don't normally think about switching it out. 
However, I am sponsoring the All Things Silhouette Conference and I am giving away a portrait for as a door prize and I really wanted to show you all that this little thing can do. It is amazing. It does have a smaller cutting width. You can cut up to eight and a half inches wide by 12 inches long. It is perfect for cutting letter size paper. It does eliminate the possibility of cutting a 12 by 12 piece of cardstock, but a lot of projects can be done with a letter size piece of paper. You can see here that the print and cut accuracy is absolutely amazing on this little thing. And the cuts came out perfectly with the settings that are in the Silhouette Studio software. Now, if you are new to working with cutting machines and cutting mats, you want to be sure to flip your cutting mat over to remove your cuts from the mat. This is going to prevent curling. Your projects are going to stay nice and flat as long as you flip the mat over and peel the mat up away from the paper. You don't want to peel the paper away from the mat. These are the ornaments that I am working with today. I did get them from Amazon and I will provide a link in the description in case you want to snag some for yourself. They do come in two halves and snap together. And when you are putting these together, you want to make sure you have the right side. You want to be able to press your image along the ridge on the inside. So this will be the back of your ornament. This will be the front. And now you can see that the 7.85 centimeters was the perfect size for these circles. When I did my first ornament, I thought 7.9 would be okay, but that was just a little bit too big. This paper is thin enough that it will sit on that ledge and you can still snap the two pieces together. I do highly recommend that you use some glue to keep this picture in place because sometimes when you put the two pieces together, the picture slips a little bit and gets a little bit wonky if it's not glued in place. For this one, I am going to add glitter to the back side. I'm just going to use some Mod Podge and apply a thin coat of that with a foam brush. I need to replenish my stash of foam brushes. This one is not really the best for this project, but it's what I have on hand, so we are going to run with it. You want the Mod Podge to coat the entire surface of the half of the ornament. You want to try not to have too many lines in there. If the Mod Podge is thick, it's just gonna take a little bit longer to dry. And I do believe that we are going to need two coats of this glitter. It's still a little bit transparent, so I'm going to allow this to dry and come back to it in just a bit. I did go ahead and put the second coat of Mod Podge and glitter on this, and I got a little bit carried away with the Mod Podge. It's going to take some time to dry, but that's okay. I really prefer using polycrylic when doing ornaments with glitter, but I saw other creators doing it this way and thought I would give it a try. The one thing I do want to stress here is that you do need to clean off the little edge where the two halves of the ornament connect. If you have Mod Podge and glitter stuck there, it's not going to close properly. So I go through with my little weeding hook and just clean all of the excess Mod Podge and glitter up off of there. And don't worry if your glitter edge is not perfectly straight. We are going to add a ribbon around the edge of the ornament anyway, and that will hide all of the flaws. And I'm not sure how this happened, but I have lost the footage for when I put the rest of this together. Not heavy. However, I did use hot glue around the lip to secure the picture. I added the tube confetti pieces to the top portion of the ornament, and it looks like very sparkly iridescent snow. It's just beautiful. I got that from the Dollar Tree, so super cheap, easy way to make your projects pop. I used double-sided tape along the edge of the ornament instead of ribbon for this one and added a little bit of extra glitter because we all love the bling at Christmas time, added a bow, and then this one was done. 
This one here also has reindeer, but a completely different personality. These are more cartoonish, and I think they're absolutely adorable. I did use the ribbon to hide the edge on this one, and it looks great, as well as the double-sided tape with the glitter. It's all really just a matter of personal choice. I do love the little snowballs in this one. They're just little pieces of styrofoam, and I got those from the Dollar Tree as well. This one is probably my favorite. It is a picture of my youngest kiddo and my two bonus sons. It says besties on the front and I used the silver tube confetti from the Dollar Tree in this one. I also used a sparkly red pipe cleaner to hide the seam of the ornament and I made this one double-sided so you can see the picture from both sides couple of jingle bells finish it off nicely and all three of these are completely different but they are all adorable now if you found any of this information helpful please give this video a thumbs up it really helps push the video out into the YouTube universe so other crafters can find it and let me know what you would like to see more of in the future I love to hear from all of you now go create something amazing and I'll see you in the next video